Oh, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for this day, the day that the Lord has made Amen. for us. We love you, Jesus. We praise your name, Lord. Amen. We love to sing your praises. Everybody, let's stand up and do that now. Thank you, Jesus. Behold what manner of love was given unto us. The Father calls us His Son. Born of the Word, not corruptible seed. But incorruptible through your spirit, oh God, it is you. We adore, it is you. Praises are for only you. The heavens declare, it is you. It is Holy, holy are you, awesome Father. And holy, holy is your name, O oh Lord. Holy, holy are you, Holy Spirit. Holy are your sons to whom born of you. It is you we adore. It is you, oh. Was given unto us, the Father calls us his sons, born of the word, not corruptible seed, but incorruptible through your spirit, oh God, it is you we adore, it is you, praises are for only you. The heavens declare it is you, only you. Holy, holy are you, awesome Father. Holy, holy is your name, O Lord. Holy, holy are you, Holy Spirit. Holy are you, sons too, born of you. Yes, we know we're in you. We are one, one with you. New creation, all things passed away, all things new. We have put a new man who's been made like yourself in true righteousness, in true holiness. It is you. We adore. It is you. All Holy, holy are you, awesome Father. Holy, holy is your name, O Lord. Holy, holy are you, Holy Spirit. Holy are you, sons too. Yes, we know we're in you. We are one, one with you. New creation, all things passed away, all things do. Put a new man who's been made like yourself in true righteousness, in true holiness. It is you we adore. It is you, only you. So it says in the scripture, You are the head and not the tail, you're always up and never below. You, you land and never uh, borrow. You are blessed when, you, when you're co going and coming, right? You are ahead. So the enemy comes united on one road, on one way, united. All of them together on one, right? They all got together against me, don't worry. They're going to flee from you, dissipated, right? On seven ways. So think about this. Now we think of these giants in, our, in, in, the, in the body of Christ from before. They were huge people 
of faith, right? Here and there. Like Richard Verbrand, that guy. Or, and they were in prison. Now, I was thinking about this, right? Because they were, if, if you look in the scripture, it talks about them. It's like they were cut with a, with a saw, right? They were killed. They were thrown in the oil. They were, so I'm thinking, where's the head in that? It says they are always up and never below. They are the head and not the tail. The enemy comes in one way and runs. So I've been thinking of that, right? And generation after generation, we go through this. So look, look, think of China, right? Right now. So the Christians, if they want to gather, they have to go underground. Not even on the ground. They go underground. It doesn't look like head. It looks more like tail to me. It, m it looks more like they are running away from the devil instead of destroying the devil. Now don't get me wrong. Don't get me wrongly. Praise the Lord for these people who stood on their feet for their faith. Because otherwise we wouldn't have been here. Totally not. So praise the Lord for that. But he says in the scripture that everybody's groaning. Holy Spirit, the Father, the, the, this universe is groaning for the manifestations of the sons. If the sons are being manifested and they are being the tail again, I don't think that looks like manifesting, manifested sons. You follow me? Either we are the head and not the tail, or they are the head and we are the tail they make the law and we just do whatever they say. The devil says how this goes and everybody does this way. Babylon says, you want to do business? This is how you do. This is what you have to do. Oh, you want to have a business? You better align, brother. Uh, so you do websites. Cool. How much do you charge? Well, let me check the competitors. So you're automatically under their feet. You want to raise, you, I cannot raise my prices because my competitors in Babylon, they are dictating the law. So you see what I'm saying? It's not head. It's still tail. And we are talking about an amazing father and it's still tail in our daily life. This makes me so mad because we, we, we can have our lives, right? We can go to work. We have really good jobs. We can make a ton of money. We can go to work. We can, we can do life just fine. And our kids, we train our kids. You do the best you can, brother. You go to school, just keep your voice low. Just make sure you don't. Just do your Christian, just make sure. But it doesn't look like head. And we're preaching about the head, right? Now think about this. Check this out. <clears throat> then he said to them, Jesus talking, right? Nation will rise against nation. And we know that. All the wars, first, second world war, war, and all those, Afghanistan, all those wars, right? Comma, and kingdom against kingdom. How was until today? The devil made the law, the Christians ran. The devil said, this is how you do it, and the Christians run for your life. Praise the Lord, they ran, because otherwise it would have been bad. Right? But what I'm saying, we cannot continue this pattern as sons. As a sheep, yeah, you run from the wolf. As a, as a servant, you cannot do much, right? As a slave, you... Just have your place. You give me the food and then you can eat. It's like, it's always under your feet. It's always there. As a son, no. I'll show you something interesting. So Jesus, right? Did Jesus ever apply to be a candidate for presidency in Israel? How come everybody called him the king? Interesting. He never applied for that. He, he never wanted that. But everybody saw, this is the king of Jews. 
even wrote it on, on his cross. He never applied for it. That was not his purpose. His purpose was the cross, right? Interesting. Well, that's a son. As he is, so are you as he is right now, not as he was. So are we in this world. But looking at us, it's like we are the tail, not the head. We don't make the law, we just are under the law when we just do, I'm talking about the law in the world, right? So about this thing in Romania, they have this huge thing about marriage and those laws about against marriage between a man and a woman, right? So it's all homosexuality and garbage. And all the Christians, they go with the thing and now we are against it when... Interesting. Let me show you something in the world. When a company and when the employees of the company, they don't agree with the, with the management in the company, what do they do? The same thing. They get out and they go with those things. We don't agree with the management. We are against this thing. We are, or they do all the strife or what? Strike. Strike. Whatever that's called. Right? That's what they do in the world if they don't agree with something. There is a law, everybody goes, gets out. Well, we are the salt of the earth. Have you seen your salt in your bottle coming against? No, it does its job. The government is not the salt of the earth. We are. The government is not the light of the world. We are. We don't change laws by voting. We change laws by speaking as kings. Voting, that's what everybody does. If they don't agree, they got to vote. They gotta, we are not like that. Either we change the pattern because we're sons, or we just align like everybody else. And there is one more generation doing the same thing. And the Lord is like, I cannot do it this generation. Maybe the next one, they get it. Maybe the next one they get it. Let me, let me read something to you. <coughs> Matthew 16, it says this. Jesus answered and said to him, Blessed are you, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood has now revealed this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. He's talking about Peter, right? Who do you think I am? Who, who do uh, the people say I am? And blah, blah, blah. Oh, a prophet, blah, blah, blah. But Peter is like, you are the son of the living God. And Jesus is like, blessed are you. The Father opened your eyes, now you see. And I also say to you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, comma, and the gates of Hades shall not prevail against it. Have you ever, ever saw an army fighting against another army with a gate? Think about it. This is an army right here, and this army comes with gates. I'm going to kill you. The gates of hell. No. How does it work? This is an army, and this is another army. And this one, let's say this is the devil with the gates of Hades, right? All the demonic realm. How, how does it work? Well, this one fights against the kingdom of light and beats them up. Now, it got more territory. It builds a wall and puts a huge gate. Then it fights some more, gets some more territory. It builds a wall, and it has a gate. Fights them more, they run more, it gets more territory and has a gate. What is Jesus talking about here? Oh, Jesus is talking about you, my army, my kingdom go against the gates and they cannot stand against you. So there should be a click in our walk where we flip from running into Let's kill this sucker. It's, it's enough. So the devil stole from the body of Christ so long, right? Kids, families, health, money. Every, everything, peace, everything you can think of, the devil stole from, from us. And the body of Christ, majority even today, they are thinking it was the Father's um, will. 
He's, he's the Almighty, he's, the, he's got the, all the control, and he, it was his will. Oh, your kid died in an accident? Oh, brother, you cannot go against the Father's will. Really? And the devil stole, the devil stole from the body of Christ. And the thief was never caught. He says, if the thief steals because he's hungry, he will not be punished. But if he gets caught, he has to give back seven times, even everything he's got in his house. He was never caught because the body of Christ was deceived. It's like, is the father stealing from us? Is the father's will? It's like, the father stole my son from me. The father stole my health. The father stole my money. That's what the devil did with the body of Christ. And the body of Christ is like, we cannot go against your will. Yeah, we cannot go against your will. It was never the Father's will, never, ever. He destroyed sickness on, at the Calvary. He took all our sins, all our, our diseases on his, in his stripes. We were healed. When we get strike with the disease, it's not the Father. He didn't send Jesus in vain. He paid for that. Now, if the body of Christ catches the thief, then the things are starting to turn. We get back what was stolen from us for at least 2,000 years. Imagine that. Okay, so with this in mind, <coughs> so y you get where we're coming from, right? Okay, well, that's it. Um, no, where is it? Yeah, see. All right. Who put that there? Um, we were looking through the scripture, and because um, I, I was, you know, we, we we understand more. The Lord revealed a lot of stuff to us. It's like. Whoa, it's like a ton. Even to understand that wisdom is not just a state of mind, and, and it's someone, right? Faith is not like something you believe more or less. It is a person, the spirit of faith, right? It's huge. I was thinking, why, when we speak over something, it's like more times it doesn't happen than it happens. Right? Why? I was curious, it's, it's, been, it's been in my mind. So if the spirit of, the, of faith is alive and we have a relationship with it, it's like, wh why isn't it working? So we went through some scripture and we found some faith <coughs> verses. Right? It says, now faith, this is Hebrews 11, everybody knows this verse. This is the definition of our spirit of faith, right? Of the spirit of faith. And the word is P-I-S-T-I-S. -I That's the word in Greek. Well, it's not those characters are weird, but this is how you say it. Okay? It's the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Faith does a lot of things. Now, I went more into faith, right? And I found this verse. For I say, though, through, grace, uh, through the grace uh, given unto me to every man, that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think so soberly according as God has dealt to every man the measure of faith, not a measure. It's not like I got a measure, you got a bigger one. He's a man of faith, he's got like three proportion. No, the measure is one measure. And it's the same word from Hebrews 11. All right? The same spirit. Another one. He gave some apostles, prophets, blah, 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 to do a work, right? Till we all come to the unity of the faith of the Son of God. Is the same word in Greek. Is the same portion. Is the same measure. Same word. Okay, cool. I went through a different one. This everybody knows in the Christian religion, right? I was crucified with Christ. I live, it's not I. And the life which I l now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, the same word. 
by the faith of the Son. Right? So we got the faith of the Son of God. It's not a portion, and my faith is smaller, and I have to grow in my faith, and you have a bigger faith. It's the same faith. The faith is not the problem. Because we are got it, but when we speak over things, it doesn't happen. Sometimes it happens, sometimes, sometimes it doesn't work. Right? <clears throat> so then faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word. Comes, someone comes, right? Okay. Now, we looked at a few verses Jesus spoke. Interesting. Oh man, it's so small. There was a fig tree and Jesus saw it and looked for fruit, no fruit. Jesus cursed the fig tree, right? This is what happened. And the disciples saw it and was like, wow, how soon the fig tree withered away, blah, blah, blah. Jesus answered and said to them, verily I say to you, if you have faith and you know what end means? And is not this or this. And means this and this is addition. You got your left hand and your right hand. It doesn't say if you have faith, that's it. Because we all got the same measure of faith, the same measure. Peter, Paul, whoever in the scripture got the same measure with us. Their shadow healed the sick. My shadow doesn't do squat. Right? Okay. If you have faith and doubt not. Addition. It's not if you have faith meaning you doubt not. It's, it doesn't say that. If you have faith in other words you doubt not. It says end. That means a plus. You should say to this, it's, it's going to happen. What, whatever you shall ask in prayer, that's when you release your word and the faith goes and does the work. Believing. It's not just when you pray, when you release it, it's, it's happened. It's believing is an addition there. Two things. All right. For verily I say to you, unto you, Whoever shall say unto this mountain. So that's the act of faith. I believe and I do it. I say, I speak, I release my word, the faith goes. That's one. Be removed and be cast in the sea. And shall not doubt in his heart. There is an addition. Because we got the first one. We, the, the entire body of Christ got the first one. They got the measure of faith. And something doesn't happen when they speak. It's like, I, oh, my faith is so weak. My faith is so... There is a second element in all this. So this one, see? Shall doubt, not doubt in his heart, but shall believe. So that's with doubt and believe one. Right? Not doubt, believe, that's one. But speaking, that's another one. So the speaking is with the faith, and this is the second element. They will have, and they will come to pass, right? Therefore I say unto you, what things soever you desire, when you pray, that's releasing your word, believe that you receive them and shall, be, and shall have them. So there is this element of believing or not doubting. It's not the faith. The faith, we all got it. And we are legit with it. And with the love, the faith works by love. Love, faith, we love you. We are one with us. We, leave you. we let you do what you're created to do. We give you life in our soul. Faith does the work perfectly. Faith is not the problem here. Is believing. So, w let's look at some scripture. Now, there is a story, and we are looking from two angles. So, we, we want to see what Jesus said about, about this thing. Oh, they so they came, had come to the multitude, a man came to him, kneeling down to him, um, to him and saying, Lord, have mercy on my son, for he is an ep epileptic and suffers severely, 
for he often falls into the fire and after, uh, often falls into the water. So I brought him to your disciples, but they could not cure him. Well, that was a unique situation because until then, they cured everyone. They never had this issue. They cured every single thing that came their way. Okay? And then Jesus said, Oh, faithless. When you read that, you think, Oh, lack of faith. But when I went into the... The Greek is not lack of faith. It says unfaithful, unbelieving, without trust. That doesn't say lack of faith. It says unbelieving, unfaithful. And perverse, that's to distort, to turn aside. I go for the healing, but in the same mind, it's like, what if he doesn't get healed? Right? It's distorted. It's not just like when you have a double, you drink. and You, you know what I'm saying? Like it's distorted, it's not just one, clear. All right? Generation, how, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I bear with you? Bring me, bring him here, right? Jesus rebuked the dem- demon, came out of him, and the child was cured in that very hour. Now, I want you to see something. This is disciples, right? Come to, they come to privately to Jesus, and why couldn't? We not cast it out. And Jesus said to them, because of your unbelief. And he explains something about faith. You got the huge measure, but even if you had a small seed, I say to you, if, if you have faith as a mustard seed, faith is that from Hebrews 11. It says, you got a full measure, but if you have a really, really small one, with believing, it should work. The problem is not the faith. Even if you got very small, a very small portion. With believing, it should work. The problem is not the faith. The reason they even went for that kid to be healed, that was proof of they got faith. You got to be crazy to go and heal someone without faith. Right? You must be a doctor or something. Otherwise, no. So crazy. Okay. If you have faith as a mustard seed, you'll, see this, you'll say to this mountain, move, and it will move, and nothing will be impossible for you. However, this kind does not go out except by prayer and fasting. Everybody talks about this kind, about the demons. It's not even a question about demons. He was not talking about demons. He was talking about unbelief and faith. It's, it's not talking about demons because that would have mean, meant, it, it doesn't matter if you have unbelief or f- faith or not, you just pray and fast and it's going to be fixed. But he was not talking about that. So this kind is not talking about the demons, he's talking about this kind of unbelief. Now think about this, right? Because we think you either have faith or you don't. And that's true. That's absolutely true. But you can have faith and not believing in the same time. We are the craziest people in this town for even being part of this church to start off with. That's the truth. So we got faith in what the Lord is doing here. That's not a question about it. But when we speak over something and it doesn't happen, it doesn't mean we didn't have faith. We had unbelief along with faith, they could be together in us. It was in them. Jesus was not addressing the faith, was addressing the unbelief. Right? Now let's look at it from a different perspective, right? a different angle of the same story. That means a different book. Then one of the crowd answered and said, Teacher, I brought you, my son, uh, who has a mute spirit, and uh, whatever he sees, seizes him, he throws him down, he foams at the, whatever that word is, his teeth, and becomes rigid. So I spoke to your disciples, and that should cast it out, but they could not. Okay, so they went to the disciples. The disciples didn't have a failure up to that point. They couldn't do it. Okay? 
He answered him and said, O faithless generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I bear with you? Bring him to me, right? Now, this is deeper in this conversation. Check it out. Then they brought him to him. And when he saw him, so the kid, right? The kid with the demon. Immediately the spirit convulsed him and he fell on the ground and wowed, foaming at the mouth, right? What happened? The manifestation as a result of the disciples pr praying and nothing happened. So like, let me show you proof that it didn't work again. Right? So you pray over something and you get thrown away, thrown off because it didn't work. And with your eyes and all your senses, you see that it didn't work. Right? So how did they know if the guy, if the kid was not healed? He was doing the same thing as before. And in their mind, it's like, we had faith, we should work. But it didn't work. The faith didn't leave. The faith was still there. The unbelief grow, grew. So imagine you have this stand right here, right? And let's pretend Paul is as strong as I am. Not a chance, but let's pretend he is. And he grabs this with a string and he pulls the stand. Oh, the stand is going to move for sure. But let's pretend I come on this direction. He pulls that way and I pull this way. But let's pretend he's faith and I'm unbelief. Right? And now I've been growing for, th how old are you, 30? I've been growing for 30 years in the mind of that person, right? And now that person's got faith because he heard the word. Until you hear the word, you have no idea. So let's say you have no idea that, that you can bend time and space, right? You're ignorant. You have no idea. And all of a sudden, you're reading the scripture. Oh, I can bend time and space. I can make it work for my purpose. You know, he stopped the sun for 12 hours. The guy took the time back 10 hours and Jesus stopped this and that and he got into the boat. All of a sudden he got on the other side. So, and material, the oil became so much from that small deal. And they, so time and space was bent. Right? Three fish and two bread or two bread and three fish and fed 10,000 people and 12 big buckets, uh, that was material being bent, right, in two days. So you don't know about that. All of a sudden you hear about it. Oh, so it is possible. Okay, you got faith because it came with the hearing of the word. You, you saw it in the word, and all of a sudden you got faith. And now you speak over time. I got 30 minutes, and I have to, I have to do work for th three hours worth of work, and I command you time to work for my favor, and 30 minutes I'm going to do three hours worth of work. And seven hours later, it took you double than usual. It happened to me so many times. Right? Like, what the heck happened? I thought I got faith, and I did. But unbelief was so there because it was built in me for 37 years. Thank you. I'm young. It was built in me for so long, and now I got faith. But that unbelief is so stronger because he's stronger than me. Let's say I'm in faith. I just got here with the word, right? The guy got me. And we got to move this thing. And I just got here, but he's so stronger because he was built in me, unbelief, for so long. And we pull, both pull this thing. Which way do you think this moves? That way. The problem was not faith. He said, faith, you got enough. Even if you got a very, very, very small seed, you can do amazing things believing. But if you got the full measure, which is amazing, with your huge unbelief, it's not going to work. All right? So let's look at this from this point. He asked the father, how long has this been happening to him? And he said, from childhood. You know how much unbelief was built in that father? Since the kid was a little kid, maybe the kid was like, I don't know, 20, 30? 20, 30 years of unbelief built in there. Because right? the guy had faith 
that's the reason why he brought the kid to the disciples in the first place. Otherwise, you don't waste your time if, if you know it's not going to work. Oh, just put him in the rain, and the rain is going to heal your kid. Are you stupid? I'm not going to take my kid in the rain. But there is that guy, and whoever that guy prays over gets healed. Oh, let's go. I got faith. You see what I'm saying? Even the fact that he brought the kid in the first place, that was proof of faith, because faith without works is dead. So he's got the works of faith. It was proof the guy got faith. But Jesus is interesting. He's asking him, how long has this been building in you, this unbelief, since the kid was small? I got so much unbelief. Cool. Okay. We read more. <coughs> and often, and he explains what happened since the kid was small. He has thrown him both into the fire, into the water to destroy him. But if you can't do anything, because he had a failure with the disciples already, and now he was like shaking even more. Like, but if there is one more chance, if you even can do anything, please help us. Jesus said to him, because <coughs> interesting enough, Jesus throws the ball back at him. <coughs> it doesn't say, Jesus doesn't say if I can believe. He says, if you, the Father, can believe, all things are possible to you who believes. <coughs> what does that mean? That means that he's, he, he's done everything for us. We got everything that pertains to life and godliness. We got faith. We got the whole living kingdom. The ball is not in the Father's court. The ball is in our court. You got electricity from the people, but you have to flip the switch to turn on the light. The power is in us. In us, he lives inside of us. It's his life we are living is above all principalities and power. It's not even a question. The ball is in our court. Why are we even talking about unbelief? If it's the ball is in his court. It doesn't matter if I believe or not. The ball is in our court. That's why we're talking about this. We can change it. The ball is in our court. If you can believe, all things are possible to you. And the father was so on the point. He's like, with tears, Lord, I believe that's why I brought him here. But I have unbelief. I believe and I have unbelief in the same time. I have faith, but I have unbelief in the same time. Now you expect Jesus, no, 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 no. If you got faith, is enough. No, he doesn't say that. He doesn't correct the guy. The guy was right, having faith and unbelief in the same time. The guy was freaking on the point. <coughs> and Jesus saw the people. He rebukes the demon in the kid. He doesn't correct the guy. Right? He fixes the problem. The demon does some stuff. The kid looks like he's dead. Jesus grabs him. Everything is fine. Now, if you read only this angle, with this last part, it looks like disciples, why couldn't we do it? And Jesus gets straight to the point. This, come, this kind come out by nothing but prayer and fasting. That's why I put the other angle when he explains about unbelief. So if you read only this, it's like, oh, the demons come out with the fasting and prayer. But no, that's why I put both angles. Right? So you got it? Good. <coughs> so let's see some other examples of unbelief. I believe we are almost done. Um, so he, Jesus goes to his town. Right? He preaches in the synagogue. Everything is fine. And uh, everybody's like, isn't this the guy who's the son of the carpenter? Blah, 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 blah. A prophet is not without honor except in his own country, says Jesus, among his own relatives and his home, in his own house. Now, he could not... He could do not mighty work there. Jesus? Are you talking about complete, perfect, amazing, intact, without blemish, without spot? Yeah, he could do not. He couldn't do any miracles because of their unbelief. Interesting. Interesting. The ball was still in their court. This is another angle of the same situation. He talks. 
And he did not many mighty works there because of their unbelief. Why is it so important for the body of Christ to get this? Because the Father doesn't have the ball. The ball is in our court. We want... Now, this is... I think the old generations, they had less unbelief than we have right now. You, every day, you look at your phone, you look at the TV, it's unbelief, unbelief, unbelief. When I, when I go to Yon and watch a movie, oh my gosh, I hate that with everything I have. You have commercials every, I don't know, 10, 7 minutes, 15 minutes. Oh, I hate those commercials for the life of me. You cannot even watch a movie like Fool because you get commercials. You get like 10 or 15 those sets of commercials. And one of those five, every single commercial, you know what it's about? If you have back pain. Oh, if your neck hurts like this, you got this pill. Oh, if you... Well, you watch two movies, you got 20 seeds of those garbages in your soul. Next time you have a back pain, what do you think? Well, I'm telling you, not the word. The unbelief was so built. And imagine how many years of, do we have on this planet so far? Holy moly. We have a ton of unbelief built in our soul. It's not the faith. The faith is not the problem. We got faith. We got the living freaking faith. <laughs> Amazing faith. Yeah? Now check this out, right? V a guy comes. My daughter is almost dying. Come and heal my daughter. Please, 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 please. She's like, okay, let's go. Goes with a guy. Right? On the way, some woman with uh, blood problems comes and touches his garment. The whole thing takes some time from their walk, right? And then the guy, what was his guy name? Um, Jairus? 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 Jairus. The Jairus guy. So this guy saw the miracle with the woman, right? On his way. And he knew my daughter is sick. Oh, oh, so it's, it's working. Look, he worked for this woman. Now he goes two more steps. While he was still speaking, the Jesus was f finishing that situation, right? With the woman. Some came from the ruler of the synagogue's house who said, your daughter is bye-bye. She was sick. You had a choice. You had a chance. But now she's gone. Now this guy, from having faith and was built with this blood situation... Pumped up, all of a sudden, he's like, Shit. look at Jesus. What did Jesus say? As soon as Jesus heard the word that was spoken to this guy, he said to the ruler of the synagogue, do not be afraid, only believe. You got both right now. You got faith and you got the unbelief. Only believe. He had two options. The guy had two, had a believe and help my unbelief. And Jesus said, no, just only believe. Don't, don't be afraid. And something happened. He did not permit anybody else to go with him. Why? You know what the crowd would have done? Oh my gosh, build unbelief in this guy like crazy. And Jesus like, no, let him separate him. Separate him right now. I told him, only believe. Now, you got to stay away from the, all these people who build in you unbelief. He got to the house, right? Everybody's crying, blah, 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 blah. And says, no, the, the, the child is not dead, but sleeping. But they ridiculed him. I thought you were crying. No, they started laughing at him, he says in another place. I thought you guys are crying because the kid is dead. Now you're laughing at Jesus at the time. Yeah. But he put them outside. <coughs> he didn't let them in because it was a bunch of unbelief again and just like just separate them. He wanted to keep everything clean so he could work. You see what we are saying? Unbelief is the problem, not faith. We got faith. We got the measure Paul got. Peter God, everybody's God. The same Jesus, the, the, the faith of Jesus. That's why we read those. We got it. Is the unbelief is the problem. 
Because every day we get fed with anything but the Word. We get busy at work. When you get at work, right? You, you are a nurse. And a good one. You go to work. What do you get fed with when you go to work? Crap. Everybody's got a reason why that guy is sick. He needs these pills and these pills and these pills and these pills. No, it's not healing from the Lord. It's like these pills and these pills. And the reasons why, because you can look at the microscope and you can see with your own eyes what this issue is. Do you believe more? No, your unbelief grows. Every day you go to work, your unbelief is like rising up because you see it with your eyes. Do you see the Lord with your eyes? Maybe you have a vision. Otherwise, no. What do you see? This natural thing. I think these are the hardest times for the body of Christ because the unbelief is to the roof. They never had this problem before. Now we got internet, we get exposed to unbelief like every freaking day. But you know what's interesting? The one who's in us is greater. We can destroy this. We can go against it. We can kill it. Um, the eye of the body. What I um, didn't notice before, but as Claude was talking, so Jesus said, only, only believe. Choose just one of the two options that you have. So Jesus says, the light of the body is the eye. Therefore, when your eye is single, one. When your eye is one, when your eye is simple. Another definition of that word is simple. It's not complicated. There's not five varieties to what we're talking about. Single, fix your eye on one. So you could say the light of the body is the eye, therefore when your sight is single, right? Thy whole body also is full of light, but when your eye is evil, thy body is full of darkness. And so when I read this initially, I'm like, Lord, that's kind of an odd comparison. You think you would have said your eye is single versus your eye is double. Or, you know, I think the New King James said, if your eye is good and then when your eye is bad. But he, the difference he makes is between having a single eye and having an evil eye. And so I was curious. For those of you that know me, I, I really like words. So sorry, it's kind of nerdy, but I like going into words. So the word evil, it's kind of crazy. It's the same word that's used of Satan, the evil one, right? And it's, it's an active form of evil. It, it ha involves a lot of labor. It involves a lot of toil. It involves a lot of strife. It involves causing pain. It's evil that produces pain. So it's evil not just in the fact that its essence is evil, but that it causes bad stuff. It causes evil to happen. So if you imagine it that way, if your sight, if what you're perceiving, if what your eyes is fixed on is evil, what is produced is garbage the outcome of that because your eye is not single in the sense of you're, you're not choosing to only believe, right? Because that's what the Lord is constantly having us do. Just, just believe, just believe. Um, and the part that got me is one of the, so the evil one, the malignant one. <laughs> so when I, when I, when you hear the word malignant, what do you guys think of? What's the first thing that comes to tumor and cancer, right? And even if you don't know the biology of cancer, ultimately what happens is you get one little funky cell and it multiplies a thousand fold out of control, okay? And what did Jesus say? Beware of the yeast or of the leaven of the Pharisees. A little leaven leavens the whole loaf. So he's saying, you guys, be on guard because you, ha you let a little unbelief in and it's gonna mess with your whole thing. That's why I want your eye to be simple. I want your eye to be single. Choose one, focus on that thing and go ahead with that or else you're gonna get thrown off base. And it's very interesting, like we were talking about earlier, it built into our old man, built into our carnal nature is unbelief. You can't, you can't get away from it. It's, it's like all your life, you don't even realize you have unbelief. Because for the time that you don't use faith, unbelief is like, well, I, gotta, I get to chill. I don't have any problem. I don't have to actively do anything. But the moment you start utilizing the faith of Christ, the moment you start trying to change things in your life, unbelief's like, oop, red alert. I got I to gotta get on board. Because that was my experience these past couple of weeks. Like last week, it was not good. We're going through this trial. Some of you know. Anyway, and so we've been really pressing into prayer and really really like let's take it you know by our teeth and frame and just persist and and just go for it and i felt like 
last week I never hit such a low point in like the trial of faith and the battle of faith. But it, for that reason, it was resistance. For as much faith as was rising up in me, there was just as much unbelief counteracting it right in that moment. And so that's why we're here talking about it today because we're like, guys, this is a big deal. And a big deal in the sense of we got to take responsibility and we got to freaking destroy this thing in our, in our lives so that we can advance, so that we can actually have the kingdom come. We can have his will be done on earth as it is in heaven because there have been generations before that have not pursued unbelief. For those, you know, earlier, like a couple of years ago, Danny um, presented us with Psalm 18, was it? I, I can't remember, but and filled in the evil, you know, and the enemy, sorry? filled in the enemy with, I pursued unbelief, I destroyed unbelief, the Lord gave me unbelief's neck. There's no tolerance, and I think that's the thing we're trying to get at today. We, we've, I've, <laughs> I, I've tolerated unbelief. I've let unbelief just be in my life. Just this, you know, apparently neutral power, but it's not, because anytime you try to advance, it takes you three steps back, and we can't afford to do that. Time is precious, it, and it, it's in our hands to, um, to quicken the return of the Lord. We, we want him to return. We want his kingdom to be manifested on the earth, which is why we got to deal with unbelief in a very aggressive way. Um, and what was the next thing? So the hardening of the heart. Oh, what was it, Lord? Hold on, give me a second. Can you move the next slide? Okay, I'll come to it later. Hold that thought. So, so she's back. Wait, wait, is he still on? Yeah, maybe. No, he's like, keep on. <laughs> so we looked at doubt and unbelief, right? And it says doubt, distazo, yeah, that's the Greek, to waver to hesitate in the modern english it says uh to be uncertain about to consider questionable um or unlikely to hesitate to believe to distrust right to fear to yeah uncertain about something and undecided did and a feeling of uncertainty about the truth reality a state of affairs such as an occasion of uncertainty so this is doubt, right? When it talks about unbelief. So this, this is what I was trying to remember earlier. Okay, so there's a difference for unbelief. So you have the Greek dictionary, okay? And it says unbelief is the same thing as unfaithfulness. The English dictionary simply says, oh, it's a state, it's a quality of not be believing, you're skeptical about something regarding something religious. In the Greek dictionary, it had nothing to do with the subject being religious or not. It had everything to do with just simply being unfaithful. And so if you extend the word unfaithful, not faithful, false to your duty, false to your obligation, to your promises, disloyal, and not sexually faithful to a spouse or lover. So you guys, big deal. When we dabble in unbelief, when we let unbelief influence our decisions and what we do we are being literally unfaithful to the lord we are being like israel right that's the problem the lord had with israel in the old testament all the time he's like you faithless generation why do you keep going off why do you keep having other idols why do you keep uh, you know abandoning your first love when i'm here trying to prove the same thing to you over and over again and so it, it hits you in the face because all of us we love the lord like it's not our intent to be unfaithful to the lord it, it's not, we're not intentionally going and being idolatrous and, you know, having an affair with another idol or something. That, that's not our heart. And so when the Lord is like, listen, but this is how precious it is to me that you believe. Because when you let unbelief take over, it's like you're, you're leaving me. It's like you're being unfaithful to me. Not that that's your intent. And so we're saying all this to awaken us, to like stir us up and to help us realize that this is serious and we need to deal with it because we can deal with it. We have the power to deal with it. We're not um, in bondage, we're not without resources, but there is so much more to obtain in the kingdom by abandoning unbelief, killing it, getting rid of it, being diligent to deal with unbelief so that we can experience the fullness of faith and the abundance of faith.
An example, an example is like, let's say you have some problem, you go to the doctor, right? And the doctor is like, oh, you got this tumor. Now, the Lord says, nothing by any means can harm you. And I'm being loyal to my husband, right? The Lord. And the doctor with a diploma, being a doctor in, I don't know, three universities finished. He it says, it's a tumor. Am I being faithful to my husband as a bride of Christ or to the doctor? It is that serious. It's, it is that serious. Oh, it's just everybody goes to the doctor, really. Everybody does not believe, yes. This is straight, but this is the truth. Because we entertain unbelief so much, it's so natural to do these things. There's, there are no pills in the scripture. There are no, it's just the promises. We go by the promises. We be faithful to our husband. We are the bride of Christ. Isn't it? That's why we are so against this. Because we tried stuff. It, if, <coughs> if, if the Lord in us who quickened our understanding and our eyes to see. If we don't break this curse over the body of Christ. We wait for the next generation to do it. And they were like, oh, it's too hard because everything is against the flow. I loved what Manu said. Bro, when I buy groceries, I buy everything I, I would like to eat. Nothing can touch me. Heck yeah, bro. Heck yeah. <coughs> Check this out. When um, he had called all the multitude to himself, he said to them, hear me, anyone, and understand. He was like on, he was serious. Hear me and understand. There is nothing that enters a man from outside which can defile him. You can eat whatever you want. It's not going to defile you. Don't eat over. But you know what I'm saying. But when the things which come out of him, those are the things that defile a man. If anyone has ears to hear, let him hear. Why is this so important? When he had entered a house away from the crowd his disciples asked him concerning this parable and he said to them you, you are you without understanding also do you not perceive that whatever enters a man from outside cannot defile him because it does not enter his heart but his stomach he's talking about physical food right and eliminated he said that purifying all foods if you have problems with oh the, these foods are producing cancer and this food has you know what's interesting about the world? Those freaking stupid people in the world. This product was good 20 years. And then all of a sudden they discovered it produces cancer. 15 more years, oh, it's good now. Funny, funny. Nothing is straightforward. And we go by everything the Babylon says, the devil says. No, I cannot eat this because no, you can eat anything. Even if you eat poison, it's going to be okay. Don't buy it. If you eat it by mistake, don't tempt the Lord. Okay? <laughs> and he said, what comes out of a man, that defiles a man. What's inside? Now we know the Lord is inside of us. We know absolutely. But it says in Romans 7, when you sin... It is not you who sins, but the sin who dwells in your members. He's talking about that sin in the members. That's not who you are, but it's, in, it's inside the heart. From within, out of the heart of men, proceed evil thoughts, adulteries, fornications, murders, thefts, covetousness, wickedness, deceit, blah, blah, blah. Evil eye, that evil eye is the one from if your eye is single, or evil. That double mindedness. Jesus said this. Wait. This kind can come out by nothing but prayer and fasting out of your heart. This evil eye comes out of your heart by praying and fasting. I had a problem with fasting, I can tell you that much. When I was in religion, I would fast every Sunday, Tuesday, and Friday for years. I didn't have a problem with that. 
how fast to be set free, how fast to have this problem solved out, have how fast for all kind of stuff. When I got to righteousness, I didn't fast today. And I had a problem with that verse, Jesus saying, um, you know, uh, the, the friends of the, the bridegroom, they are not going to fast as long as the bridegroom is with them. He's going to be taken away from them and they can fast. And I was thinking, the bridegroom is right here, I'm one with him. Why should I fast? I'm good, I can speak over things, I can frame things, everything is fine. But Jesus says, this situation, this unbelief from your heart, the solution for it is not just speaking over it. It's praying and fasting. And we decided we're going to go full armor against this unbelief. Every Monday we're going to fast for this. The, f the whole day we're going to frame the f unbelief has no place in our heart. We're going to take it apart and we're going to destroy the sucker. It has no place in us. We got the faith of Christ fully measured, fully loaded. Faith goes when we speak, it goes. But because of that unbelief, it's like... Eh, eh. We're going to destroy that unbelief. The problem with Abraham, he didn't have a greater faith than I do. Oh, no way. Maybe mine is a lot greater. He didn't have unbelief. He had a very small unbelief. Like I like what the guy said. If you got a... The Lord tells you when you're 100 years old, you're going to have a kid. What's the first thing you do? You go, don't Google. How old was the... How... How old was the man who had, or the woman who had a child? Oh, it's impossible to have at this age, blah, 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 blah. And then you build up unbelief and, oh, Lord, are you sure? Yeah. But how is this possible? Because Abraham didn't have that problem. He didn't have internet. And next year, you're going to have a kid. <laughs> See why there are dark ages over the body of Christ, because unbelief is to the roof. That's why... When I was a kid in my, my, my religious life, I was always questioning because I read the scripture and I, I ate the scripture. Like Acts, the book of Acts, I don't see it anywhere happening. We, we, we cannot cast out a cold out of us. And the shadows healed the people and he prayed over that girl and came to life and prayed over hankers, something and touched the bodies and got healed. I was like, where is that? Because I've never seen it anywhere. For 20-something years, like, I was questioning, where is that, where is that? Until I was 31 and a half, then the Lord showed me, oh, it is true. Oh, yeah, really? Oh, man. Unbelief was so built up, preached from the sermons, from the pulpits. Now, we want to go against unbelief, so I will ask you to, do you have anything else to say? Let's stand up. <coughs> and now we know what the problem is. One of the problems, right? <laughs> we are amazing. We are sons of God. But now we know why things are not working for us. And we can go against unbelief. So let's uh, give a tithe of this time. Thank you, Father, for this. We are one with you, Lord. We're absolutely one. Thank you for opening our eyes to see this. We go against unbelief with everything we've got. Yeah. Unbelief has no place yeah. in us. We're not being trained by the devil and by Babylon anymore. We go fully faith and believing in what you said. Thank you, Lord. We give you a tithe of all this increase. We know that everything you told us cannot be stolen from us and is going to grow and be multiplied in us. Thank you, Father. We worship you for all this. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, we worship you. Amen.